What I'm about to share is going to revolutionize your theology. What I'm about to share is going to cause you to say, wow, I never saw that before. What we're going to do is we're going to read Galatians chapter 4 verses 21 right through to the end of the chapter, verse 41. And then we are going to decode this. And this is going to be awesome. Verse 21, Paul says, tell me, you that desire to be under the law, don't you listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the servant, key word there, servant, and one by the free woman, key word there, free. However, the son by the servant was born according to the flesh. The servant he's talking about is Hagar or Hagar. Hagar literally means in Hebrew, the stranger. So the son that was born through Hagar, Hagar, the stranger, was Ishmael. So if you remember the story, the Lord came to Abraham and Sarah and told them that they would have a son. And years went by and Sarah didn't get pregnant. They didn't have a son. They didn't have any child. So years went by and it's like they're kind of like scratching their heads saying, well, hey, you know, God told us we're going to have a son and it's not happening. And we are old now. And I mean, if we don't do something about this, if we don't, you know, make it happen, it will never happen. So Sarah said to Abraham, take my servant. Key word there again, servant. Hagar the stranger, Hagar, okay? Take my servant and my servant, that handmaid will be as like a surrogate mom to me. So she will have a, a son and I will adopt that son as our own. So that will be our son. So Hagar had Ishmael. That son was not a miracle of God. It was done through human effort, human work, human planning. And so they had a son, all right, but it wasn't exactly what God was talking about. And that's what Paul means here when he said that the son of the servant was born according to the flesh. It was through fleshly works that that son came about. But the son by the free woman was born through promise. That is, of course, talking about Isaac. And the free woman was Abraham's own wife, Sarah. She was a free woman. She wasn't a servant. She was a free woman. And when that son was born, okay, Abraham was like 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old. So it was a miracle of God. Two completely different worlds we're talking about here. One is Ishmael and the other is Isaac. Ishmael being the son of the servant. Servanthood. Serving. Working. Whereas Isaac was the son of promise, the son of the free woman. It was a miracle of God. These things contain an allegory, for these are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children to bondage, which is Hagar. Bondage, servant, Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answers to the Jerusalem that exists now for she is in bondage with her children. So just as Hagar had to answer to Sarah, just as Hagar worked for Sarah, so as Paul says, Mount Sinai or the covenant of Sinai works for the free Jerusalem. Verse 26, but the Jerusalem that is above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice you barren who don't bear, break out and shout, you who don't travail, for the desolate have more children than her who has a husband. And that is found in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1. Now we, brothers, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as then, he who was born according to the flesh persecutes him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. So the scripture says that Ishmael persecuted Isaac, okay? Ishmael, the son of the servant, speaking of servanthood, working, whereas Isaac was the son of the free woman, speaking of freedom. So just as Ishmael persecuted Isaac back then, even today, the children of servanthood, the children of works, persecute the children of freedom. Even so, those who are involved in a religion of works and servanthood, 
They persecute those who are truly born again and free. But don't forget the religion of service and servanthood and works works for the free woman, works for the free. However, what does the scripture say? Throw out the servant and her son, for the son of the servant will not inherit with the son of the free woman. And that is Genesis chapter 21, verse 10. So then, brothers, we are not children of a servant, but of the free woman. So what is this all about, you might say? Well, let's recap. Back in the beginning of this chapter, Paul made it very clear. There's the son and there's the servant, and they both do the same work. He actually said there's no difference between the two. However, this is the kicker now. This is the key. This is where the insight comes in. Paul is talking about service as in works without the spirit, without really your heart being into it. Apparently in Galatia, there were some believers that thought that they could, you know, work, just be a servant, just be like Ishmael, just work for God. And, and that's good enough. Just working, just doing, going through the motions. What Paul is saying here is, no, it's not about just working. Although yes, we should all do the work. However, that's not where it's at. Paul was telling these people, you know, you are stuck in a very, very shallow rut. However, you're stuck in a rut. You are stuck in, in this shallowness of just thinking that just going through the motions, just, you know, working, serving God as you interpret the Torah, you think that's what it's all about. But no, that's just the surface, okay? That's just the surface. Real Torah observance. Real Torah observance means death, not doing, spiritual. Remember, the whole doctrine of faith and grace is from the Torah, okay? When Paul said, you know, that it's not by works, but the, the, it's the word of faith that's in your, in your heart and in your mouth, he got that right out of the Torah. Deuteronomy chapter 30, the doctrine of faith is from the Torah. What you need to understand is that the Torah of God, the true law of God, okay? Not the law of men, not the law is what, how Paul says here is, is, you know, some kind of a service thing where you, this shallow law where you think it's just all about works. But the real law of God, the real Torah of God is not about doing, it is about dying. It's not about works. Realize, do realize that the doctrine of the just shall live by faith is an Old Testament doctrine. Let me put it this way, and I'm telling you, this is going to give you some insight you never thought possible. Much of the law of God is thou shalt not. Is that works? Is that works? Is that doing? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. Is that something you got to work to obey? <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, thou shalt not steal. Is, uh, is that a work? No, it's not a work. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Is that a work? No, that's not a work. You see, how many thou shalt nots are in the law of God compared to thou shalts? Okay, this is what Paul is saying. Going by the real, real scriptures, going by the real Torah is not about doing. It's about repenting. It's about dying. It's about living in self-denial. That's how Paul can say at one time, you know, if you do this, 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 and this, you're going to go to hell. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And at the same time say, it's not about the works of the law. Okay. This is the whole idea that the law of God, the true law of God calls you to deny yourself, calls you to self-sacrifice. That's what it's all about. Time and time and time again throughout the scriptures, God said, you know, I don't want your sacrifices. That's not what I want from you. You know, you're fasting, you fast, and this is not what I want from you. What I want from you is a broken and contrite heart. What I want from you is repentance. What I want from you is self-denial. What I want from you is for you to go on that altar, so to speak, virtually speaking. What I want from you is for you to stop sinning and for you to live right. But no, you're going through the motions. You're thinking that it's all about the works of the law. You see, that is what it's all about.
You understand? So when Paul was talking against the works of the law, he was preaching Torah. He was preaching what the Old Testament teaches all the way through. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And David said, if it's if it's sacrifice, if it's bulls and, and animals that you want me to sacrifice, Lord, I would bring it, but that's not what you want. And all the way through the prophets, God keeps on rebuking the people for going through only the motions without really repenting, okay? That is what it's all about. So there's a big difference between when Paul said in the book of Romans, you know, those who do the law will be justified, the doers of the law will be justified, and the works of the law, okay? The works of the law is spoken of from the time the law was given until Jesus came, the works of the law was condemned if it's not accompanied with true repentance. And this is why Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, be careful when reading Paul's letters because many misinterpret that to their own destruction. And even today, many people misinterpret Paul's letters to make it sound like we don't have to obey the law, just throw the law, oh, that's we're not in the age of the law anymore. Oh, really? Well, then God's a liar because God said over and over again, scores of times, that it was eternal. His word is forever settled in heaven. It always has been and always will be from before the beginning of creation till after it's all said and done. Seek God while he may be found. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.